The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Queen Creek Fire Department, Arizona, on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 35124. Please utilize this five-digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Starting on the passenger side front bumper face, you'll find two paddle latches which will gain access into the front intake. As we move more toward the center, you'll find your electronic siren and PA speaker. Moving to the driver's side, you'll find dual air horns. Moving up onto the top of the bumper extension, you'll find the location for your front bumper load. And then moving over to the driver's side, you'll find your mechanical siren. Let's move up onto the cab where you'll find on the outer edges of the A-pillar, turn indicator marker lights. Moving just inside of that location, the headlight structure housing low and high beam headlights. The high beam will be on the inside. Just above the headlight structure, you'll find a cluster of emergency warning lights. And then directly in the center behind the Pierce logo is where you'll find the hood release to gain access into the front hood area. Moving upward, you'll find your windshield composed of three windshield wipers on the seamless one-piece windshield. As we move to the outer edges, you'll find your mirrors housing a flat and convex mirror. And then as we move up to the brow, you'll find your clearance lights embedded in the forward front-facing floodlight. Moving all the way up onto the roof, you'll find your emergency warning light bar. Nestled with inside the light bar in the center is where you'll find your Opticom. And then directly above the Opticom is where you'll find a rotational spotlight controlled from within inside the cab area. Let's take a look at some close-ups of the items we just talked about. First, let's start with the Pierce logo directly behind release mechanism for the hood. Let's go back down to the bumper extension. We'll find the two latches on the left side of the image here, which is the passenger side. This gains access to your front intake. As we move just to the right in the very center, you'll find a swivel inch and a half discharge dry deck material inside. Let's take a look at the full side of the vehicle. This is the driver's side perspective. Let's focus in on the cab now, starting first at the front axle with a sight gauge inside, Alcoa wheels, and Goodyear tires. As we move to the front bumper extension, you'll find shoreline power, air, and an emergency warning light side facing. You'll also find just underneath the A-pillar, the drain for your front bumper load. Let's move up onto the cab now. First on the side, you'll find a marker turn indicator light. As we move now to the grab handles for gaining access into the door, easily accessible with a gloved hand and they are keyed. As we move to the grab handles themselves at all points of entry for gaining access in and out of the cab. And then you'll find two lower emergency warning lights on the cab, one directly over the axle and one toward the rear of the cab. As we move upward from this location, you'll find a side facing floodlight and then all the way to the very back corner of the apparatus, you'll find an emergency warning light. Let's take a look at some close-ups, go back to the bumper area, first starting with the auto eject plug, 20 amp for your shoreline inlet, and then also an air inlet, auto eject, and an emergency warning light. Let's move into the cab now. This is the driver's space. Affixed to the door paneling, you'll find all of our safety and warning information, door locks, and also electric windows. You do have deployable steps that will deploy when the uh, vehicle door is opened and they will close once the door is closed. As we move to the uh, shoreline power, this is your battery voltage indicator. When plugged into shore power, this will become active. I'd also like to point you to this yellow placard. This is the manufactured from Pierce for the town of Queen Creek. It does have the date of manufacture, the five digit job number, the gross vehicle weight rating, cold tire inflation, VIN number, and all of the component fluid capacity and fluid types. Let's move to the floorboard where you'll find your brake pedal and also accelerator. To the left, you'll find at the floorboard level two foot pedals, one for your air horn and one for the mechanical siren. Moving up at about the left knee of the operator, you'll find tech module, transmission ABS diagnostic ports, and also your display port. Just beneath that, you'll find your ABS diagnostic switch and also an indicator for engine diagnostics 
region inhibit, and DPF region switches. Let's move up now to the steering area. For the dash on the left, you'll find your hazard lights, start and ignition switch. Just inside of that location, you'll find a switch labeled EM. Stands for Emergency Master Engage and Disengages All Emergency Lights. Headlight switch and panel switch, allowing you to brighten or dim lights within preview of the operator. As we move to the opposite side of the steering column, you'll find your OK to engage the high idle indicator and also switch to engage the high idle. On the left gauges, we have the transmission, oil pressure, DEF level, and water temp. On the right, you'll find front and rear air, fuel, and volts. In the center, you'll find your tachometer and speedometer. Located above and below, diagnostic engine information will display. Let's move just to the right of this location center console area where you'll find not pictured in this image the yellow diamond pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release you'll also find your pierce command zone tremendous amount of information right here at your fingertips please see your owner's manual for more information allison transmission pad on the right hand side with an informational note to pump in neutral once again you can utilize this device the command zone center with a gloved hand or with your finger moving to the right we do have some switches engine brake on and off, a setting switch for that engine brake for low, medium, and high, a lock for your drug cooler, and then also a stationary OK to pump and roll indicator, your water pump switch, and foam system switch. Let's move further to the right on the same plane where you'll find your mirror controls in the upper portion for right and left. Just beneath that you'll find the go light control module, and then also an informational note down at the very bottom regarding engaging the retarder when on wet surface or slippery surfaces, and this is a caution indicator. As we move toward the center, you'll find your climate control for heat and defrost, front and rear heat, and also front and rear AC. Looking overhead of the operator's position, let's go to the far left to the yellow placard to the height of your vehicle, 10 feet 0 inches, length 33 feet 2 inches, and a gross vehicle weight rating, 49,800 pounds. If you make any adjustments to your vehicle that may alter any of these, please update this placard. To the right, you'll find your emergency master, roof light, front warning, side warning, lower rear warning, upper rear warning, load manager, and your Opticom switch. Moving further to the right, we have a front flood, driver side scene, passenger side scene, rear scene, siren brake for your mechanical siren, electronic siren, air horn, and a momentary Opticom switch. When any of these switches have been engaged, they will illuminate the outer edge, indicating that they're on. Moving further to the right, you'll find your siren control and PA speaker module. Moving further to the right, you'll find your traffic advisor. Then you'll also find two electronic gauges. First on the left, your pump pressure digital readout, and then a water level gauge and a foam level gauge. Moving further to the right, you'll find this red indicator. If flashing, do not move your apparatus. You have a compartment or door open. Directly behind the operator seat, driver's seat, you'll find a speaker. There is volume control for your backup system. As we move to the rear cab, you'll find these easily accessible grab handles to go and access in and out of the cab. You'll also find all of our safety and warning information affixed to the door panel. Let's go ahead and move inside the cab now. You have two compartments on passenger and driver's side, roll-up doors inside those uh, compartments. And we have adjustable shelving and LED lighting. Let's move more toward the center to the back of the engine cowling where you'll find two USB style plugins, 12 volt access, and in the very center lift and turn latch will gain you access into the rear portion of the engine where you'll find all of your uh, dipsticks and daily checks for your oil and transmission. Let's go ahead and take a look now at the rear wall where you'll find two seats located against the rear wall and you'll also find at the very bottom section 12 volt access located here behind the diamond plated area. Let's go ahead and move back outside to the body area. We'll first start at the very top where you'll find two side facing scene lights. You'll also find on each side of those emergency warning lights side facing. As we move down you'll find just over the uh, rear axle a side facing lower emergency warning light and then also folding wheel chalk storage location to the rear of the axle. Let's go ahead and take just a quick look of the entire apparatus. We'll start now just over the notched section, which is just at the rear of the cab. First starting at the very top section with a dead lay. There is a release mechanism to allow you to remove that speed lay. 
There is also information here just beneath for two additional speed lays. The release mechanism is on the lower section and those are both foam capable. I do have a warning label here regarding entanglement hazard. Because of those hoses coming from aloft, there is the possibility of entanglement and that's why we have a warning label. Let's move now down into the notched area where you'll find two two and a half inch discharges. These are ball valves. And then as we move just inside of the location, you'll find a pressure warning hazard. Caps may be under pressure, be cautious when opening them. As we move toward the center, the Pierce logo American flag eagle. This is your large diameter intake. As we move to the upper right, this is your foam auxiliary operations. This is your fill location. There's also a warning label here not to mix different brands or consistencies of foam for the possibility of foam failure. Also, if you're climbing onto the vehicle, you should always face the vehicle. Let's move down now to the lower section where we'll find the two and a half inch female auxiliary inlet. And then down at the very bottom, we'll find all of our color-coded and labeled discharge drains. Let's go ahead and take a look at the entire pump panel area. First, we'll start at the very top section of the pump panel. If you've engaged the switches from inside the cab, you'll access this pump OK light indicating that it's OK to engage the pump. As we move to the left, you'll find your minimum operation maintenance schedule. We'll go over that in a moment. Also, a warning only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment only after they've received proper training. And then to the right, the green module is your foam tank level A indicator. As we move to the gray module, you have two gauges here, your master intake gauge on the left, and on the right, you'll find your master discharge gauge. In between the two of those gauges, you'll find the test gauge ports. They are currently plugged and are for testing purposes. Let's move to the upper right hand side where you'll find the PCM fault indicator and also an audible alarm. The audible alarm just under the placard does have the ability to rotate the outer edge of the bezel to dampen the sound level. Let's move now down onto the pump panel. We'll find all of our discharges. They are locking and you can see across the top that they are all foam capable with the red indication of foam. As we move to the right, we'll find your pressure throttle governor on the right hand side and also a water tank level indicator. As we move to the left, you'll find your tank fill recirculating line, and then right next to it, the tank to pump. In the pink area, you'll find your deluge discharge. This is your master stream device on top of the vehicle. Let's move just to the right. This is your foam module control. And as we move downward, you'll find two electric valves, front inlet, and large diameter passenger side discharge. In the upper right, you'll find your fire pump primer. It is a push to prime air prime, 1000 RPMs for best practices. As we move down, you'll find your foam system, uh, concentration information, and also specifications. This is your minimum operation maintenance schedule for the test pressures of 150, 200, and 250 PSI. On the left hand side, you'll find the associated GPM at test pressure, and the right hand side, the associated RPM, five digit job number, 35124 and a govern speed of 2100 RPMs. As we move to the very bottom, all of our color coded and labeled discharge drains. As we look to the pan door here, you'll find your foam fill operations. The yellow handle matches the instructions on the back of the pan door. You'll also find in the same area the manual pump shift override. It is a switch that's protected with an indicator. Let's go ahead and take a look at the vertical side sheet where you'll find also scene lights. And as we move now to the next compartment on the vertical wall, when plugged into shoreline power, this battery charger will be active. You also have a pullout tray in the lower section. On the very far right is the release and lock mechanism. As we move through the rest of the apparatus, you'll find SCBA bottle storage. Let's go ahead and review those. There are two located here and also an oxygen bottle. These two do have retaining straps. As we move to the rear area, we have a single SCBA bottle with retaining strap, a fuel indicator, and then also the silver ultra low sulfur diesel. And when you flip the flap down, you'll find you expose the 4.5 US gallon DEF tank. Let's go ahead and take a look through some of those compartments. First, starting in the upper portion at the rear, you'll find a tool board D handle gains access to the backside. When it's in the open position, it will lock into position. It will require you to lift that lock to restore back to its normal position. And also a pullout tray release mechanism on the right hand side. And at the very bottom, you can see the folding wheel chocks. Let's move around to the rear of the apparatus where you'll have at the tailboard area. You have two lights in the right and left side and also a, tenor, a center attachment point brake, turn, and reverse lights. 
emergency warning lights in the lower section of the rear. As we move all the way to the very top section, you'll find a side, or I'm sorry, rear facing scene light, and then also your ladder storage location behind the D handle door. Your vehicle has a 24 foot extension and a 14 foot roof. At the very top section, you'll find two smaller compartments, attic ladder, and then also long handled tool storage. Center dividers with grab handles in the very back section for your hose dividers. A couple close-ups here of those upper portion storage locations for your folding ladder and also long-handled tool. Once again, 24-foot extension and a 14-foot roof. As we move to the center, we do have some warning labels here. Fall injury, don't ride on the vehicle while it's in motion. Entanglement hazard because of those hoses coming from aloft. And then also if you're climbing on the vehicle, make sure you face it. Directly in the center, a recessed backup camera. As we move to the very bottom section between the roll-up door, you'll find a pull-out tray release mechanism on the lower right. This is in its fully extended position. This is going to be the top section of the step area, additional storage. Your vehicle does have a ladder for gaining access to go aloft. Be cautious, there are some pinch points on this ladder and we do have warning labels indicating where those pinch points are. Let's go ahead and move around now to the passenger side body area. We'll take a look inside the compartment starting at the very rear. Inside this compartment there is a pull out and tilt down tray and then also an adjustable shelf in the lower portion. We'll go ahead and take a look through all of the compartments. Let's go ahead and look over the uh, compartment over the rear axle where you'll find two pull out and tilt down trays. These are for gaining access for your uh, SCBAs. And then just beneath that you'll find bottle storage and also a fill location for your ultra low sulfur diesel on the passenger side. The bottle storage does have retaining straps. And once again as a reminder, ultra low sulfur diesel only and it is the silver cap. As we move to the front section of the axle, you'll find SCBA bottle storage for three SCBA bottles with retaining straps. And then we have an additional set of pull out and tilt down trays, one in the first and second compartment with a center divider, and then also a adjustable uh, shelf in the lower portion. When the shelves are in the open position, there is a lock mechanism on the lower right hand side you will need to depress to restore back to its normal position. As we move just over the notch area, you'll find long handled tool storage, also the dead load release mechanism on the lower right. And as we move downward, we'll find a warning label here, entanglement hazard because of those hoses coming from aloft, there's the possibility of entanglement. Two foam capable hand lines down in the lower section also. Let's go ahead and move now downward just below this area to the notch area where you'll find a warning label here regarding climbing on the vehicle. Make sure you face it and always, or I should say, don't ride on the vehicle while it's in motion. We do have our strainer in the upper left hand corner, large diameter pump intake, warning label regarding pressure hazard. As we move downward, this is going to be an electronic valve controlled by the pump panel area. This is your large diameter discharge and the override is located just to the left of the actual pipe. As we move down, I would like to point out two lower drain locations. First, we'll start at the rear section of the cab. This is your manifold drain. This is just in the notch area. As we move to the front bumper area, you'll find your front inlet. This is the drain for it. Let's go ahead and now move inside the cab area. We're at the very rear section of the cab where we have three seats, two forward facing and one rear facing. As we move into the cab, you'll find all of our safety and warning information, once again, affixed to the door panel. Overhead, you'll find push on and off red and white lenses. Behind the officer seat, you'll find a storage location here for your unit radio, and you can see all of the wiring associated for that unit radio. Let's go ahead and move inside the cab now. Your vehicle is equipped once again with a supplemental restraint system, SRS or airbag. Please do not mount anything within the area of the airbag deployment. 
Let's go ahead and move to the left of the officer seat where you'll find a siren brake, air horn, and mechanical siren push buttons. Further to the left, you'll find 12 volt access via USB style. You'll also find the control module for your overhead light on and off switch. And then at the very front section, you'll find your vehicle data recording port. Let's go ahead and take a look overhead in the officer seat area. First, once again, push on and off white or red lens. Then we'll start here at the far right hand side. We do have a wiring indicator that there is spare wiring behind this plaque. That's what the red candy cane for. Also, you have a AM FM Bluetooth weather band CD player. As we move to the rear section of the apparatus, you can see the hose dividers and also your hose bed, which does have the yellow chevrons indicating the walkable surface. In the upper left in the dunnage area, you'll find your Husky 3 foam system module. You'll also find a top port exhaust. Extremely hot temperatures do exist in this area. Be cautious. Also, you'll find your A tank for foam fill A and then also top fill for your water tank. And then to the right, you can see the two discharges going to the rear. We do have a warning label on the foam, and it's a foam failure hazard. Don't mix different brands or consistencies of foam for the possibility of failure. Let's go ahead and take a look from the dunnage area. You'll find your master stream device located here, exhaust, and also your Husky 3 foam system reservoir. At the very bottom, there is a valve and then also a sight gauge for your foam system hydraulic fluid. As we move through the rest of the top section of the vehicle, I'd like to point out there are two locations for hatch compartments, two in the forward portion and then two in the rear portion. All of them have LED lights and also dry deck material and ventilation inside those compartments. As we move to the hose bed area, the hose bed is designed to support a firefighter's weight. It is fully enclosed and also has the yellow diamonds indicating the walking surface. As we move toward the cab, this is not a designed walking surface and therefore we have these warning labels indicating that this is a slippery surface and not intended to be walked on. Congratulations, Queen Creek Fire Department Arizona on your new Pierce Fire apparatus. If you have any questions, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.